Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to the Outer Worlds. We're still on the groundbreaker. Well, kind of back on the groundbreaker. Last time we've done a lot of interesting things. Mainly we've uh, created these moon man and women. Well, ma man over here, woman over here. Uh, because we can't really see the difference from afar anymore. Who's who? Because that's Felix and that's Parvati. But uh, we also managed to finally talk to Jesse, who's ironically, considering the current situation in the world, um, confined to quarantine because of, yeah, some illness she has. But she's also in trouble with Udom Bedford, the mustachioed man over here. So let's have a little chat with him. Because maybe we can convince him to uh, let Jesse's debt go. Uh, fine, Udom. How might I assist you? Well, I have a bit of a question uh, for you, Udom. I'm here about Jessie Doyle. I want her debt settled. Miss Doyle owes the board a significant sum. Alas, the only collateral she has is her organs. Compulsory donation is quite legal in such cases. Hey, excuse me? Uh, she's worth more alive than dead. That's not unreasonable. Boss, you can't be serious. The board's got no right to just enslave another human being. That's where you're wrong, young man. Miss Doyle is deeply in debt, and the board has every right to do whatever they like to recoup that debt. What guarantee do I have that she'll agree to the terms you negotiate? Yeah, I kind of made a mistake. I wasn't reading that properly enough. I didn't think he would actually enslave her, but... Um, she's hiding in sickbay to avoid assassins. I'm sure she'll prefer the work. You might be surprised. But we'll proceed on the assumption she'll be reasonable. I will recall my collection agent. Tell Miss Doyle to report to me promptly for her first assignment. Now, is there anything else you need, or can I return to my work? Um, uh, but sure. We're, we're leaving, I suppose. There's nothing else I could have done. I'm sorry, Felix. I know you probably hated that, but at least we fixed it with the persuasion option. I went a bit too, too, uh, too fast there. Um, so let's head back to the medical bay, and now we can talk to Ellie. Wish I could say it was good to see you, Ellie. At least you finally got your chance to square our debt. That ought to make you smile for once, huh? Nothing makes me happier than being even. Except being right. That's nice, too. Okay. Um, you're probably mad at me. Got word from Udom, from the hitman who trailed me the other night. Seems I'm indentured to the board now. I ain't too elated about going exclusive, but it's better than winding up dead. You sure saved my skin, stranger. All debts between me and Ellie are cleared. She even paid me for that, so uh, watch yourself while I'm gone. Uh, and then Ellie... The good news came through the wireless. Looks like you paid my debt to Jesse. I guess that means I owe you now, right? Tell you what, I'm a little short on bits at the moment, but I'm a decent scrapper and a better than average sawbones. If you're looking for a medic, I can work my debt off. Okay, there we go. That's probably another companion then. Um... Are you saying you'll work for me just because I helped Jesse? If I'm being honest, and I prefer not to, I was about ready to pick up another contract anyway, and you settled this in a pretty tidy fashion, which tells me you're competent. But we can say I'm repaying the favor if you prefer that version. Okay, she just likes me, so, um, welcome aboard, Ellie. You won't be sorry, though it looks like you've got a full roster already. Time to play favorites, Captain. I definitely will. Felix, head back to the ship for now. We're gonna go with a redhead squad. We got us a real sawbones. Welcome aboard, Ellie. Okay, so Felix has left the party and we now have Ellie in our party. That's cool. I'm gonna give you some new duds. She also comes with three free perk points, probably because of her level. Um, so let's give her some more health. And uh, increase the medical skill. Although, I could increase the heal amount granted by the medical inhaler as well. You know what, let's increase the medical skill for now. So let's do that and apply. Next up, we'll be able to uh, increase the healing amount from the inhaler, which would be really, really nice. And there we go, we dressed her in pink. And she has some pretty nicely upgraded weapons, so I don't really need to change that, which is... Fine by me. If she wants to work with that, I'm fine with all of that. So there we go. Maybe I should turn off the helmets again, because this is maybe just a little bit weird. There we go. Much better. We can see our uh, squad ladies again. So that was that quest. We have a new companion. 
Uh, the other thing we could still do on the Groundbreaker was finding the Science Weapon. Uh, for that, I'm quickly going to nip back to uh, Ada, indeed, so to the, uh, the Unreliable. Miss Ellie, er, uh, Dr. Finhill, I notice your pistol's been making a funny noise. What are you talking about? I oil it every night. Well, look here. Your slide's not recoiling fully. You might be due for a new spring. I could take a look, maybe fix it for you. Uh, sure. I'm short on bits at the moment, but I'll pay you back. Oh, no. I mean, it don't cost nothing. I got a spare spring in my pocket here, even. Everything's got a price. Okay, that's a nice bit of banter. So let's get back to the unreliable and check out that log on the terminal. So, and then we go to the terminal, and I think, yeah, search Hephaestus Mining Archive Cartridge for keyword weapon. That captain sold Harris something called the Rearranger, then left before we discovered the damn thing doesn't work. Only thing it rearranged is the number of bits on Harris's cart. Looks like some strange tech or weapon. Maybe a scientist can make something of it. And then Doc Caulfield couldn't save Lamb. Now I gotta arrest Harris for his murder. Confiscated that. Oh, wow. Confiscated that weapon he used and stored it in Bertie's office for now. Figure the least the site supervisor can do is fill out the forms for whatever that damn thing is. Don't know how I'm gonna detain Harris. Not like we got prison cells on this rock. Then Lemuel, Harry Ford, indenture, contract 35 years, remaining, time of deceasement, cause of deceasement, blunt force trauma, weapon unknown, took a good whack to the nog in a facial area to be specific about it. Specific about it. It's all twisted up too. Nose is five times too big. Jaw is shrunk to almost nothing. Teeth are all out of kilter, though I suppose that was true pre deceasement. If the blow itself didn't kill him, there's no way he could have breathed all with all that damage. The rearranger? <laughs> that sounds like another weapon. That's not even the the Vulcan's hammer that we were talking about before. Um, okay, I'm gonna set that as my active quest. So first things first. They got stuff in here I ain't seen in ages. I need to Some check with right the freelancers. But they rake in the bits. Because according to Glanis, there's a woman that actually can help us here. Uh Lilia Hagen. So let's check oh. Hello? Tobias Oyama. Welcome to Sublight Salvage and Shipping, a legitimate business for legitimate consumers. You the one flying the unreliable? Uh, in, indeed. The name is Captain Sandra or Hawthorne. Hawthorne? Nah, she, he probably knows who Hawth Hawthorne is. Miss Lily has been expecting you. I'll unlock the door. What happened hey, to you exactly? Out. Glad to see you ain't moved on from Groundbreaker yet. Hey, Tobias. How's the leg? Good as you left it, ma'am. Still bends and everything. Look, she, you, uh, what happened to your leg? A bullet went through it. Most of the way. The other guy thought his ship was perfectly operational. I told him it was salvage. We disagreed. I won. Workplace hazards, Captain. Pretty routine around here. I mean, she's the dog, but she's a pretty... Um, how should I put this? She's pretty cool about everything. She's not, like, really concerned about her patients half the time. Uh, so this place is open now. I could probably just... Hi! Hi, Lilia! You look so you're like a the cool new character. Captain in town. I was hoping you'd make your way to my office. Saves me the work of hunting you down. Lilia Hagen, CEO and Executive Director of Aggressive Operations. I'm guessing you already know about Sublight, otherwise you wouldn't have come. Aggressive Operations. Okay, name Sandra, Captain of the Unreliable. Charmed. It's nice to see the Unreliable again. Useful ship. Hawthorne was my contractor. I'd recognize that leaky boat of his anywhere. Okay, so, um, Hawthorne, I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't kill him. I didn't ask. I have a salvage job for someone light on corporate ties with a reliable set of wings. But, there's a catch. Just like in the serials. If you have a nav key to Stellar Bay, the job's yours. Interested? Sure. Always up for uh, another side quest. One of my guys in Stellar Bay has a lead on some high-grade salvage, but he went dark before he could spill the goods. 
We arranged a drop at the Saltuna warehouse's loading dock. Find whatever he left there and take it to Fallbrook. My gal Catherine will be expecting you. Fine. Um, what kind of salvage are we looking for? When the board pulled out of Monarch, they buried or sealed anything they couldn't carry off world. Apparently, one of Catherine's teams uncovered an abandoned lab with full tanks of Alta Vitae gas. Okay, and what exactly is that? It's exactly one million bits per cubic meter. Before you get too excited, the only thing rarer than Alta Vitae gas is a reliable buyer. Dangerous stuff. Acid for the nuclein in your cells. It's no good to anyone outside of a lab. But it can be a lot of fun, if you don't mind the possibility of rewiring your body on an atomic level. You and I have different notions of fun, Dr. Fenhill. I mean, Ellie's a bit weird, we get that. I'll take the job. Now, get going. Catherine will brief you on the details when you check in with her at Fallbrook. One last thing. When you're on the job, keep a pair of eyes on the back of your head. Understood? Um, what? Well, so, sounds shady. Could be. You'll do fine. Probably nothing to worry about. Probably. Okay. I ain't worried if you aren't, Captain. Uh, honest. But, well, I'm worried, so you should be worried, probably. That was a bit sketchy. So, something's gonna happen on Fallbrook. Fair enough. That's that, so that's another quest uh, started. We're not have to hurt nobody, are we? I, I don't know, Parvati, we, we might have to. We've been shooting a lot of people since you've joined, so I don't know what you're worried about at the moment. Um, now, I need to find that science weapon. So it's in the repair bay. I still think that repairing should be where engineering is as well, but since we know it's not over there, we should probably go down this thing. Down. I don't have Felix with me, so I hope I got... I'm just allowed in. Um, we'll see in a second. Seems like they don't mind all that much. So... If this is... What I think it is... It was supposed to be of... Repair Slip 13. There's a lot of dudes here. I'm just gonna take a look around to see if I can't find anything. But for now, there's just a lot of people around. So it doesn't seem like there's any, but anything here, so I need to go back up. So since we kind of didn't see anything in engineering either, the only thing I can think of is, you know, where the unreliable is parked. That there might be a repair bay over there. Um, I don't see numbers anywhere. So I don't know if I need to look at number 13, where that exactly would be. Since... Oh, wait. Huh. 13. Just off of Repair Bay 13. So that's this. And then... We might get up here. Oh, god damn it. Can't get up here. That's annoying. If I recall correctly what that story exactly was. But there was somebody who locked himself up in one of the cargo containers and was screaming about the weapon but this is barred so i need to somehow make my way around that okay so i think if i can move up here let's sneak like this and i think through the sleeping quarters we can actually go in here don't know what that does exactly so there's odd laws here Somebody was trying to fix this up, but okay, like I got been here in a long while. Hey, no one hit him. No mess. Okay, that was one. Oh god. There we go. Okay, they were pretty low level enemies. But this is clearly that repair bay. Okay, okay, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Um, but we need to find that weapon here close to something. Hmm. So that's a workbench. Fine. We don't really need that. I'm just going to check out the, ooh, repair hanger keycard. 
So let's take all of that. Thank you very much. But indeed, looking at their weapons, they just have sentry blades and stuff like that. That seems to be pretty straightforward. This is probably the way out. So yeah, that was the door I was at before. But I got a key card for this area as well. And according to the log we picked up, somebody locked himself up in probably this ship. So we might have to get him out of there somehow. I don't know what the outlaws were doing here. But they were probably trying to do the same thing. Getting that person out of there and maybe even getting the weapon. If they even believed that there was a weapon. That's a door I can open up, I would assume. But can I check out the ship itself? Doesn't seem like there's a, a real point of access there. So let's... Oh, there's another one over here. And a pulse hammer, thank you. Let's grab all that and then we can open up this door. Let's open that up. Doesn't seem to have any enemies, but... This clearly was somebody's resting place. There's something on the wall here that doesn't seem to be interactable, but... Come on, this wasn't there for nothing. Ooh. Prismatic hammer. Hammersmith was working on a hammer weapon, the pulse hammer, when its rival company, Aramid Ballistics, stole the plans, rushed its development, and beat them to the market, all the while ridiculing Hammersmith with a marketing campaign about them having no hammers in their weapon line. Hammersmith executives demanded the ultimate hammer to be produced, but this prototype was so expensive that it never entered production. Science weapons are unique weapons that have strange and powerful effects. Science weapon damage and the strength of their effects both increase as your science skill is increased. Okay. So, that's a fancy save, by the way. I'm just gonna check the terminal in a second, but I wanna equip this bad boy. So I've also changed the damage display to show me what the actual damage is on the weapon, not the base damage. So now it shows it with my uh, skills applied, so that means that the Prismatic Hammer now does less damage. Because I don't have anything invested in melee. I do want to see what that does. So let's remove the Vortex Maze for now and equip the Prismatic Hammer. It's only level 7, it weighs a hell of a lot. Um, but I might be able to upgrade that a little bit. There's a workbench right outside, but let's check out the terminal. So it doesn't say who this terminal belonged to, probably the guy that was arrested. But he found it in an old crate. And it, he talks about how it strangely it glows, the trail of its wake lingers even when my eyes are closed. Um, and then it seems like the weapon is actually dangerous to be around as well. There's a curious energy signature swirling about the weapon, though I've yet to identify the source. The air tastes of copper and I have lost several teeth. Okay. And now we probably have the damage type, elusive end rays, raising the hammer's elemental properties to four, shock, plasma, corrosion and radiation. Now for the bad, in my attempts to neuter the self-destruct functionality, I inadvertently caused a small fire. The hammer's manual controls may never function again, swinging it seems to be the only way of cycling through its elemental modes. Okay. And then he locked himself into his room, because he didn't want anybody else to uh, work with this weapon. Interesting. Now let's wield this potentially very dangerous weapon. There we go. This is a, a hammersmith weapon. A hammersmith hammer. Um, let's not use that for now. I'll just uh, walk around with it and uh, fire it whenever we need to. So, I think that's about it for the groundbreaker. So let's head back to the unreliable and take flight once more. So with that done, uh, we can actually talk to Ada. I don't know what we need to do with Ada. Now that you have acquired a nav key to Stellar Bay, would you like me to contact Dr. Wells? Uh, that might actually not be such a bad idea, so put him on screen. Well done. You'll love Monarch. Exotic climate, violent native species, fascinating culture, really. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blythe. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. If anyone knows where I can find those chemicals, it's Hiram. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. They can help us fight back against the board. They can help us set things right. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. Okay, so you sound like you've been to Monarch. <laughs> 
No, never. Monarch is a hotbed of political activity. I can't imagine why Hiram set up shop there. Cuisine, perhaps? Okay, um, where should I start? You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. I recommend a hunter by the name of Nioka. Frequents the drinking establishments of Stellar Bay. Very hard to miss. Sounds like another companion. Once you have everything you need, make your way to Hiram Blythe's compound. Okay, um, all right, I'm off. I'm guessing I want to I wanna do something first. I'm going to go to Dr. Wells' lab, because I know I can do that, and maybe have a chat with him face to face. Because I want to know a bit more about, basically, our guide through this entire thing. Best of luck. Everyone on the Hope is counting on you. And there we go, level up from that, because that was a healthy chunk of, uh, well, experience. And, well, nobody's here anymore. I expect, every time I turn around, I expect my companions to be there. But, yeah, they're, they're on the ship somewhere. So, I'm going to put four more points into dialogue. That puts every skill under dialogue up to 50, which is good. Um, then I'm going to put about... You know what? The remaining six points into melee. I want to see what that hammer does. And I don't really mind all that much. Um, so let's apply that. And I can't take a perk because it's not an even level. So that's Fallout New Vegas uh, rules there. We so there we go. We successfully arrived at Phineas's orbital lab, Captain. And we are still in one piece. Shall I congratulate myself? Or would you like to do the honors? Uh, congratulations, Ada. Congratulations. Well, I, I wanted to say congratulations, but I can't really do anything. So talk to you later, Ada. So let's go take a look at his lab. Ooh. This place actually looks pretty big. <coughs> Hello? Can you hear me? Does this work? Oh, damn it. Blast, that's loud. I'm just securing my ongoing experiments and securing myself. Okay, he's probably locking himself up. Mind the mess, sir. I haven't had a visitor since... Uh, in fact, I've never had a visitor. Aha! There we go, there's the man himself. What the hell is that supposed to be? Is that an irradiated pig? Bub bubbles. No, why would you call this thing bubbles? That's horrifying. There's a dead one over here as well. Phineas, what have you been up to? Oh, there's another dead one. Hello. Oh, thank the law. Your skin hasn't spontaneously changed color. Potential side effect of the revival process. Very rare, but uh, you never know. Would have been funny if I turned blue. Right. Welcome to my little uh, habitation, such as it is. I've got uh, caffeinoids, cysty bits, if you're into that sort of thing. So, welcome. Make yourself at home. My secret hideout is your secret hideout. I have no idea what sisty bids are. Um, for what it's worth, I appreciate you pulling me out of the hope. Not at all, my intrepid accomplice. I should thank you for tolerating my somewhat brusque manner. I only regret that I couldn't save more of your fellow settlers, what with being hunted by the board and emptying my supply of necessary chemicals. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you about something else. Of course. The science weapon. What's on your mind? The science weapon. I just told you. There's some reason you're hiding behind bulletproof glass. Oh, it's not you. I uh, do experiments in that room. Some of them get quite scientific. The unexpected is to be treasured, but uh, from a safe distance. Regardless, it's quite comfortable in here, you know. I have my beans, have my caffeinoids, plenty of toilet paper. Toilet paper? Okay, that is really funny because everybody's been uh, scavenging for toilet paper these days because of the, you know, coronavirus. Absolutely. Let's talk. Um, let's talk about... The... Have you met my crew? No, and I've been trying very hard to avoid making eye contact. Nice to meet you, Dr. Wells. I'm Parvati Holcomb. Not another word. I don't want to know your name. I don't want to know who you are. Let's just enjoy our plausible deniability while it lasts, shall we? Why don't you just invite the entire colony to my secret, carefully concealed laboratory? It isn't as if I wanted privacy. 
Well, you haven't been really forward with me, um, so show a little hospitality, Phineas. Oh, very well. I can be a little cantankerous when I haven't had my caffeinoids. You have my apologies and so forth. For what it's worth, I am pleased that you found a crew, such as they are. Well, if you're pleased, then I'm pleased that I'm you're pleased. You're a talented scientist, after all. Our kind has always been incredibly popular. In, in what? Spare me the flattery, Phineas. Um, there was something else I wanted to talk to you about. What's on your mind? Can I talk to you about the science weapon? Got a moment to talk? Absolutely. Let's talk. That seems like a double thing. Don't you ever leave your lab? I wouldn't survive 10 seconds in the blackness of the Aether. Well, no, I imagine I'd last at least 12 seconds before I'd lose consciousness and die of hypoxia. Okay, that's not what I meant. Do you have some kind of life outside your work? Life outside work? No, of course not. My life is my work. For that matter, everyone else's lives are also my work. An entire colony's worth of lives are at stake. It's up to me, uh, up to us, to set things right. I feel like it's just deflecting to a little bit. To your question, I'd rather stay right here in my lab. There's too much work to be done. The Hope's colonists won't revive themselves, you know. I'm not exactly sure if that is Phineas's, yeah, main goal here. Um, why are you so obsessed with reviving the Hope's colonists? Because we've lost our way. The board has a stranglehold over this colony. And we've all been conditioned into total obedience. The Hope is full of specialists, scientists, engineers, talented individuals like you. And people who haven't been corrupted by the board. Unfortunately, the Hope's colonists have been frozen for decades, well past your shelf life, so to speak. No offense. So that's why we've been uh, experiencing those side effects, but... Um... So you must have solved the problem since you revived me. Ah, you begin to perceive the truth. Yes, according to the board and their narrow-minded scientists, you should be a pile of organic sludge right now. Ten years. That's how long the average human can remain in hibernation. You were frozen for decades. In theory, you never should have survived the revival process. But the conventional theories are wrong. You're living proof that it can be done. There's yet hope for the hope. <laughs> Get it? Yeah, I got it. But if you thought I might turn into organic sludge, why was the first thing you did to me rocket me down to another planet? Because that was a bit weird. But uh, don't try to be funny, Phineas. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm glad to hear that. We'll do our very best to save them all. I'd best get back to work. Oh, I can feel my last dose of caffeinoid fading. I think that's fine for now. Aha! Is this... This is the shrink ray. Aha! I see you found my portable molecular compression device. Better known as a shrink ray. Find a target, point, shoot. Your target will shrink down into a manageable size. Whereupon you may commence beating them to a pulp. Feel free to try it on a marauder sometime. Okay. So I just got that. I got the shrink ray. That is Sisty Pig. Sisty Pig hooves. Excellent test subjects. Also surprisingly nutritious. Okay, so now we've learned the, the name of those monstrosities. Sisty Pigs. And we know what that is already. That's a canid. And everything else around here seems to be empty. Well, mostly empty. Ooh, and there's a terminal here. So it's an email from Phineas to somebody else talking about us and that he doesn't really trust us. Um, to H. Blythe. So that's Harmon, probably. That's the, the guy he was talking about that we're going to meet next. That is interesting. So he doesn't really trust that we'll be able to do what he wants us to do. But we'll see about late, that later on. So before that, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little episode of The Outer Worlds. And next up, we're going to go to a new planet, which is going to be very exciting. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode of The Outer Worlds. Goodbye.